Hi everybody, this is Miss Amy from the North County Branch Library with you for today's STEAM Wednesday video. Today we're going to be playing a game called Good Bug or Bad Bug. And we're going to talk about why some bugs are beneficial in that they do something good for our garden or for the earth. So let's get started with that game. Here's our first bug or insect can see that's a ladybug. So is a ladybug a good bug or a bad bug? Well, ladybugs are very good bugs. The reason that they're so good is that they eat these little tiny bugs called aphids or aphids that you might find in your garden and those little bugs eat the plants. So the ladybug eats them and that helps to save your plants. Ladybugs are also really cute and some people think they're good luck. So. I love when I see them in my flower garden. Now, I don't know if you know this bug. This one is called a praying mantis. The praying mantis is a very odd looking bug. Do you think that's a good bug or a bad bug? Well, the praying mantis is also a good bug. And the reason that the praying mantis is good is because it eats some of those bad bugs or those pests that are in your garden. Now, I personally don't like the praying mantis and I don't hurt them, but usually if I find them in my garden, I'll take a shovel or something and I'll move them to another part of my yard because they eat the good caterpillars that are in my garden. So even though they're good bugs, sometimes they eat bugs that we don't want them to eat. But we still consider them beneficial or good bugs. Okay, can you see what that one is? This one is called a dragonfly. Is a dragonfly a good bug or a bad bug? It's another good bug. They also eat some bugs that we don't like. They eat mosquitoes. Mosquitoes not only will bite you, but they also can cause disease. So we really don't want mosquitoes around. So we're very thankful that we have dragonflies. I just saw a butterfly fly by, which is pretty cool. Okay, how about this one? This is a bee, right? And there are different kinds of bees. Is the bee a good bug or a bad bug? Bees are very good insects because they help grow new plants. What bees do, they do something called pollinate. They take the pollen, which is kind of like a little, um, like a powdery substance that's on a flower. They take the pollen from one flower and they move it to another flower. And when those two pollens mix together on that other flower, they help the plant to grow seeds. So if it weren't for bees and other pollinators, we wouldn't have some of the food that we eat. So next time you're eating a salad or a fruit and vegetable, make sure you say thank you to the bees because they help new plants grow by spreading pollen. Did you notice that all of those bugs were good bugs? That was a little bit tricky, but they are all very good beneficial bugs or insects to have around in your garden or in your yard. So I wanna show you a little experiment that you could do at home. First, I wanna just show you, we have this nice book. It's very simple, good for kids who are just learning to read about insects. And there's a whole bunch, we just got these at the library about amphibians and reptiles and mammals. That's a whole new science series that we got. And I have another book I'll show you in just a minute. Before we go on to our experiment, I wanna let you know if you're doing our summer reading club that our word, our um, secret word for today is pollen. So it's all lowercase, P-O-L-L-E-N. That's how you spell pollen. You can put that code word into read squared and you can get points for the Summer Reading Club. Now I want to show you this experiment. So what I did was I, you don't have, to, if you want to try this at home, you can, you don't have to make yours look like a bee. But what you want to do is just put a cotton ball or take a cotton ball. And in this one, I made a little flower. Again, you can just use a cup. It's going to be very hard to see, but there is some coffee grinds in there. And my other flower with the little cup has, that is cornmeal. 
So I'm going to take, I'm gonna just try to hold this up and show you. I'm gonna take my little bee and the bee goes and flies down into the flower and while the bee is drinking the nectar on the flower, it's picking up some of that pollen just by sitting there. And then the bee flies over to another flower and goes and some, drinks some nectar from that flower. And what happens, the pollen falls off in there and it mixes together and that helps grow the seeds. Now it's gonna go back to the first one. And what you'll find out, and again, it will be kind of hard to see, but if you do this at home, you will see it for yourself. It has mixed together. So you can see there's some black from the coffee grinds in with the yellow, and the same thing happened here. The coffee grinds have some yellow in them. That's how the pollen mixes together from the two different plants or two different flowers. Now they have to be the same type of plant. So a strawberry plant and a strawberry plant or two uh, flowers that are the same type of flower. So that's how pollination works. I have one more exciting thing I wanna show you and that is a real insect. One that I find a lot of in my garden and it's a monarch caterpillar. So I'm going to get up and show it to you. Hopefully you can see it. And it's on a leaf. This is called a milkweed leaf. And it's the only thing that the monarch caterpillar will eat. And it's the only plant that a monarch butterfly will lay her eggs. So my garden is full of milkweed. Now I wouldn't normally say that you should go outside and take a bug and bring it inside and try to take care of it because it's just like if you have a pet. I don't have a pet bird and I'm not quite sure how to take care of it. If I just gave it a piece of chicken, it's probably not going to eat that because birds don't eat chicken. So you need to know what to feed your insect. So if I wanted to bring in a ladybug, I don't know what ladybugs really eat other than those little bad bugs. So I'm not going to be able to have a ladybug inside. But when I was a teacher, I learned how to take care of monarch caterpillars. And there's also a wonderful book for kids called How to Raise Monarch Butterflies. And so some other teachers taught me how to take care of the monarch caterpillars. So I'm able to bring them inside and feed them the milkweed that they need. And then eventually when the caterpillars get big enough, they're going to make a chrysalis and then eventually I hope you can see that out comes a beautiful monarch butterfly this one emerged from its chrysalis just this morning now I'm not going to let it go yet because we might get some thunderstorms and it's really not strong enough yet to fly outside by itself so I'm just going to keep it inside overnight and then tomorrow it will be ready to fly free and I always let my caterpillars or my butterflies go so that they can go out and meet other butterflies and hopefully we'll have some moms that'll come and lay some more eggs and then I'll have more caterpillars and butterflies. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to get your read squared points for watching and next time you're outside go looking for bugs and be thankful that we have so many great bugs outside. Bye!